Hey guys, Jeremy Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to tie a cool little attractor. Uh, we're going to tie Higa's SOS. Um, originally started out as a beta's pattern, but now more of a general purpose made fly attractor. Tied on a curb shank hook. Great little emerger pattern. And we're going to get started on it right now. So in the vise today, I have a TMCO 2488, which is just a curved wide gap nymph hook. And then I have a bead to match. Uh, this is a tungsten bead. You can tie it in brass. This is 2.4 mil or 3 30 seconds of an inch. So first thing we're going to do is just start this thing off by uh, laying down a thread base. We're just going to start right behind our bead here. And I just have uni A dot. Um, UTC 70 because it's a flat thread would probably be a good option. But I'm going to use this uni A dot today. So get rid of that. The next thing we're going to do is tie on some UTC wire and I have small silver. So I like to get a nice little thread base going before I tie that in. Tie it on my side of the hook and then we're just going to bring it around to the far side of the hook. Uh, it's just going to make it when we wrap this forward easier so that it doesn't interfere with our tail. So we're going to bring this down pretty far. Not wicked far, just pretty far. About there, down the bend, and we'll leave that there. So I'm gonna put a tail on this, and for a tail, the original pattern calls for a melanistic or black pheasant tail. Um, I'm gonna use some stiff hackle fibers here, just in black. Um, for this size fly, uh, this works out better for me. I like the look better. So let's take a measurement here. And we want to be that hook gap. I like it a little shorter. Uh, you could play with that. So take that measurement. Get it in there. And try not to fat finger it. And we're just going to bring this up. Keeping that right on top as much as we can. So we have a nice even body. And then we'll just come in here and cut this out. I'll break that last one off. So what I like to do here is just check on my tail. See what I did. Brought it down pretty far. It looks good. We got a tail in there. So put that back in. And then I'm just going to smooth out my body. And create a very slight taper and then we're going to come all the way down the hook again trying as best i can to keep these nice tight touching turns but watch that hook point all right and then we'll untwist our thread here by spinning it counterclockwise we'll just come up here and smooth out our body just a bit and that looks good enough to me so we're bringing our wire up and we're going to do a couple open spiral turns here. I think five on this, two, three, no, three, four, and a fifth. And then we will tie this off. Let's get a couple wraps on that. And I don't know where that went. And then we'll just helicopter this off. All right, so let's come back here and start on our thorax. So the original pattern calls for floss. Um, I don't like to use floss on this for a wing case. And I'll show you the reason why at the end. Um, so holographic tinsel, some flash, whatever you have. I'm going to use some flashaboo, a couple of strands doubled over. And I'm just going to tie that right in on top. And then like I said, for a thorax here, our tie-in point is going to be about the hook point. That looks about right. And then we're just going to start with some dubbing here. And this is black polar dub. And I've mixed in just a tiny bit of rabbit dubbing. Just because synthetic dubbings, to me, don't always like to dub onto a hook. So if you can put a finer natural fiber in there it binds onto your thread a little better. So just start a nice little noodle, keep it pretty tight. And you notice too, we're right up back behind the bead. All right. And whoop, just 
get this going. Noodles too long. Okay, there it is. And we want this pretty round. That might be a little dense, but uh, we'll roll with it. Yeah, it's fine. So for legs, I have some crystal flash and I have this in a black and I have it in the micro size. For this size hook, I like these smaller legs. You could probably get away with standard black crystal flash, but this is what I like. So throw a wrap on there and then we're gonna come around, throw a cross wrap, just kick those back. And then we'll come back again, see if we can get them facing back. And they are, so we're gonna leave that there. So we're gonna pull this over, and I know it looks like a mess. I got a bunch of fibers here. Um, like I said, if you wanna use a holographic tinsel, it'd probably be easier for most people. Check to make sure that's right on top of the hook shank. Looks pretty good to me. And then we're gonna pull this back, get a couple wraps, and then we'll just cut this out of the way. Come right in here, take that out, and then we'll take a measurement on our legs. Uh, this is somewhat preferential on the legs here. Um, I'll do this so you can see. I don't like my legs too long, so I'm gonna go about halfway down this body, which would be probably if you wanna measure right above my hook barb and just cut those out. So I'm gonna throw a quick little whip in this and then we will finish off with some UV and I'm not cut my legs off and I can't see them. Okay, okay. Legs look good. Body looks good. We can pick that out if we want. And this is the real reason I don't like the floss besides floss is a pain to work with. I'm going to coat this with UV. And once you put that UV on the floss, it darkens up so much that you can't see it. And I think you lose the effect of the floss, the red. So I, I don't like to do that, but I do like to use UV. So if you are going to use UV and you don't want your back to darken up too much, I would suggest using either... Uh, some flash boo like we did or some holographic tinsel or something of the like. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Super simple, great little attractor. Betus Mayfly. Got it on a curb shank hook. Pretty durable. Good color. Black. Uh, I think an under underutilized color. Uh, give it a try, guys, and we'll see you next time.